here. Hard to believe. But first, SCC Kids presents. Come on, let's go. Today's clever trick, I've got my toucan because I'm going to be making instant ice. Do you think I can do it? It's a pretty clever trick and it's a whole lot of fun. Let's see if it works, okay? know how to do that? Okay, I'll show you. Oh, that's pretty good. This trick's a pretty simple one. All you need is a bit of ice. Ice that's already there. And what you do is you take a bottle and you put it in the freezer. And you take it out of the freezer before it freezes. It's usually a couple of hours uh, for most freezers. And the water's not totally frozen yet. But when you pour it, onto the ice. Something pretty magical happens. That was a whole lot of fun. I'm glad it, I'm glad it worked and I'm glad I was wearing my toque too. A lot of ice there. All right, um, hope you enjoy the rest of SEC Kids Presents. Story time. 
But first, I'd like to show you some Christmas lights that other people sent up. Over there is some green and red Christmas lights. All the way over there. Hey, Leo, let's read a story. It's called Three Presents for Baby Jesus. Far to the east of Bethlehem, the wise men studied stars. There was a dry and sandy land where palm, with palm trees and bazaars. One night, they saw a brand new star. So high up in the sky, it seemed much brighter than the rest. They had to find out why. They had read about a certain star. The star would be the thing for them to follow so they'd see the Savior and King. Let's pack our gifts and go right now. The star will be our lead. We'll have a chance to worship him, one said, and they all agreed. The, de the desert sand was hot and dry. The camel's hooves dug deep. They traveled for many night days and nights with very little sleep. They headed to Jerusalem, for they, here they would find they would, they thought they'd see the Son of God that had been born, so people would be free. King Herod's home was where they stopped to ask a favor. Please help us to find the baby king, so they can, so we can kneel in prayer. The smartest teachers and the priests were summoned to the court. The prophecies. The prophets have told, foretold his birth, they said in their report. In the land of Judah, that's his home, the city's Bethlehem. Then the Magi then know where to go and said, thank you. King Harold was not pleased with this. He did not like the news. He did not want another king. Who would the people choose? He called the wise men back to him, tell me where he is found so I can come and worship him. Spread the world word around. The bright star led them once again. It stopped over the place where they could see God's own dear son. They'd see him face to face. His mother, Mary, held him close. They fell down on their knees they worshiped him with joyful hearts the new born king is to please they brought their precious gifts to him some incense some iron and gold uh, myron sorry they were so happy to be there for they had been so bold before they went back home again god told them in a dream do not tell Harold where you've been. He has an evil scheme. They went back home another way so Jer Herod would not know. Their faces shone with their happiness. Their hearts were all aglow. That's it. Thank you for eating with me, Alina. Knock, knock. Who's there? Armageddon. Armageddon. Ooh. Erm, I get another gift? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cody, that's not what Christmas is all about. We should be thankful that we even get any presents at all. You're right, Wendy. We don't deserve presents, but I sure love getting them. Yeah, I do too. 
It's kind of interesting that we get presents on Jesus' birthday. Yeah, yeah, that, that is a little strange. Well, Wendy, I actually think it's not as strange as you think. God is the ultimate example of generosity. And today we are going to talk about the word gift and all that that means. It is actually a very important word, especially around Christmas time. I think there's a lot we can learn about God's love when we consider gifts. How so, Cody? I, I know I love gifts. Well, um, Wendy, when I open up gifts on Christmas, I am very happy about getting them. I also feel very loved by the person who gave them to me. What, am I, what I'm saying is that as much as you enjoy that doll that Auntie May gave you last year, I am sure it's more important to you that you know Auntie May loves you. You are right, Cody. And I love Auntie May. And as much as I love Christmas gifts, the most important and the best gift we could ever get is Jesus. In Romans 6.23, it says, the Bible says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Free gift, though? Well, aren't all gifts free? They are, Wendy. But what God is saying in this verse is that we don't deserve it. What we truly deserve is death. We have earned that. Our wages. We have not earned the free gift, but Jesus gives it to us when we receive him. Free gift? Yes, Wendy. Free gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus. We can never earn anything that is free but you do have to receive it. And you gotta open it up, right, Cody? I love to open presents on Christmas morning. And the reason we get this gift is because God loves us. I know that's why Auntie May gets me presents. That's right. When I get such a precious gift like this, God offering us eternal life through Jesus, we just don't deserve it. I love God even with, with all my heart. That is the best present you could ever get. I know I believe God in God as well. How can I help but love him even more? Hey, Cody and Wendy. I prepared some special Christmas baking for you. And I picked up some eggnog and gingerbread and time! <laughs> oh, oh, Mom and Dad, thank you so very much! <laughs> I love you, Mom and Dad! <laughs> we love you too! Yes, we do! Merry Christmas, everyone!
Okay, let's continue to read the Christmas story from Matthew chapter 2, 1 to 14. Okay, listen up. This one's about the wise men, all right? Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is this newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem and Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them that the time when the star had first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And when it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. All right, the story of the wise men, or some know of them as the three kings. We often say three kings, but we don't know exactly how many of the wise men there were. We know that there were three gifts, and sometimes that's why we think there might have been three, three different um, wise men. But the wise men brought some pretty special gifts, and they're kind of significant. One of those gifts was gold, and gold is a gift fit for a king, for an earthly king. Gold was very, very, very uh, precious in the time, and, and the wise men laid gold at Jesus' feet. Another gift was frankincense. Frankincense was a sweet-smelling uh, perfume, and it represented Jesus' deity. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. So that little baby boy Jesus is actually God, and the wise men laid, laid this frankincense at the feet of Jesus. And the third um, uh, gift that the wise men laid at Jesus' feet was called myrrh. And myrrh was a burial spice. That's kind of a different thing to, to give Jesus, but it looked forward to why Jesus had come to this earth. And that was because he had come to die and die for us. The wise men arrived at Jesus because they were following a bright star. And we can see that bright star on top of the tree. And that's the real treasure is that God was leading them to the greatest gift of all time. And that's Jesus, his one and only son. I really love the story of the wise men. They traveled so far to see Jesus and they were led all along the way by a bright shining star. And God leads us to himself as well. God leads us to Jesus as well, just, just like he led the, the wise men. And um, when we hear the stories at Christmas time are about, about Jesus and who he is, let's always remember that Jesus came. 
with a purpose, with an amazing purpose, and that was to be the savior of the world. And if he's your savior, you have opened the greatest gift you could ever open. Better than any present you could open on Christmas Day. And in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life, eternal life, forever with God. And um, yeah, this Christmas time, let's remember Jesus as the most important important gift. What do you have to do for a gift? Have you ever got a gift at Christmas time? That's that's really special. Did you earn it? Did you have to do a lot of chores? Did you have to work around your house? Did you do maybe you did a lot of those things, but did you know why why you got that gift at Christmas time? You got it because whoever was giving it to you, whether it's your mom, your dad, your aunts or your uncles, they loved you and they wanted you to give this and you didn't have to do a thing for it. And this Christmas time, Jesus is that special gift that you don't have to do anything for. God loved you, that's why he gave his, his son. But you have to place your faith in him. You have to trust him, you have to believe in Jesus. And that's how you receive this free gift of eternal life that's in Jesus Christ. And you can have a, you can be part of God's big family this Christmas time. And if you want to know how to open this, this present, there's the little acronym ABCs. I know you guys learn a lot of ABCs at school. And, and it's, it's helpful to remember. And how you open this wonderful gift that Jesus is, is first of all, A, you admit that you're a sinner. Since Adam and Eve, everybody born after them was born with the big problem of sin, and our sin separates us from God. And we can't be with, with God because of our sin. God is perfect and holy in every way. And first off, we have to admit that we're sinners. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's me, that's you. That's your parents at home, that's your friends at school. We have to admit that we're sinners. Yeah, I've sinned and I know my sin separates me from God. And then B, we have to believe that God loved us enough to send Jesus to die on a cross for us. We have to believe in Jesus and believe what he did when he died on the cross. He did for us. He paid the penalty for our sins. And now, oh, my heart, I just feel in my heart how much God loved me that he gave his only son and Jesus would willingly go and, and be punished him in, in my place. And I believe him. I admit I'm a sinner, but I believe that Jesus did something for me. I believe that he died on the cross for me, that he's my savior and I'm placing my faith in him. And C is confess with, with your mouth. If you believe in Jesus, you need to confess him. Uh, confess that you are a believer, that you are a child of God and that that um, you've placed your faith in Jesus and that you're a follower of Jesus. And that's so important too, so that others may know uh, that you know and love Jesus. So ABC is an easy way to kind of remember it, but admit you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus died for you and confess him as your savior and your Lord. And if you truly believe in your heart, you are saved. And uh, you can pray that even today. And this Christmas time, I want you to open that greatest gift that ever was, that gift of Jesus. I want you to be able to open that today, uh, to even today, wherever you might be. And if you've never done that, you need to do that today. And ask your parents, or you can even give me a phone call. <laughs> 
I'd be happy to uh, chat with you. But, but even in wherever you might be, let's pray together and uh, make sure that you know Jesus as your Savior this Christmas, the true meaning of Christmas. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Jesus. He is the greatest gift that we could ever have. Lord, I know we're sinners. We don't deserve this, but nothing we do can make us worthy of your love, but you loved us all the same. You sent your son Jesus to die on a cross to pay the penalty for our sins. And if there's any kids out there today, they need to say no to their sin. I don't want to sin anymore. I know my sin separates me from you. Please forgive me of my sin. I place my faith in Jesus. I trust what he did was for me. And I accept him as my Savior today. And dear Lord, if there's any kids out there that have accepted Christ as their Savior this Christmas, let them know that they've received the greatest gift of all time. And we thank you so much for that gift that you give us and help us to follow you with all of our hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name. All right, and I hope this Christmas that you have a wonderful time with your family and spend some time um, thinking about the true meaning of Christmas, that Jesus is God with us and the greatest gift that we could ever have and share that message with others. And um, wow, I'm looking forward to seeing you next year. I know I'm thinking, wow, yeah, this is the last SCP. SCC kids for this year um, but we'll be back in a couple of weeks and really looking forward to seeing you then and hope that you have a really great great uh, time off with your parents I know a, a lot of you don't have to be at school and you're pretty happy about that um, I just really miss you guys a lot love you guys and I'm praying for you and hope that you have a wonderful and a happy and a Merry Christmas all right we'll see ya See you later. Bye for now.